So far in these videos, you've seen how to perform a brand new installation of Windows 7, as well as how to upgrade Windows Vista to Windows 7. But if you're just not yet sure whether to leap straight into Windows 7 or maybe wait a bit before fully committing to it, let's take a look at how we can perform a dual boot scenario. That way, you can easily use both operating systems. Now, it should go without saying, you really should back up anything that's important before you go ahead and do this just in case you experience some problems. So as we did with our first brand new installation video, we'll need to boot our computer using the Windows 7 DVD. Now I've done that ahead of time and we're here at the start screen that we've all seen before. So we're simply going to choose next and then click install now. As is standard for pretty much all Microsoft products, we'll need to accept the license terms and click next and then we'll choose a custom installation. Now at the top here we can see there's my current drive which is what has Windows XP on it at the moment and we can see around about 3 gig of space has been used by Windows XP. Now in order to install Windows 7 in a multi-boot situation I'm going to require either a whole new hard drive or at least another partition. So on this computer I've added in a new drive here so we'll select our new disk disk 1 and we'll click next and Windows 7 will begin installing to the new drive now of course as usual this is going to take a while we're installing a whole operating system here so we're going to pause the video and we'll come back shortly okay we're back we now just need to run through the remainder of our normal Windows 7 installation and we've done this before so we'll zip through this pretty quick. So first we need to enter in a username. I'm going to give mine the username of trainer and for the purposes of this exercise I'm going to leave the computer name as it is and we'll click next. Now we'll need to enter in a password for our administrator account and I'm just going to enter in password for my password hint here and we'll click next. Now the final step here is to enter in our product key but for now I'm going to skip this step as I'm going to be blowing away this machine shortly anyway so I'm going to uncheck this box and just click next but ordinarily of course I would be entering in my 25 digit product key here and then clicking next. For our Windows updates I'm going to choose the bottom option here to ask me later since I really don't need updates for this machine and then we'll accept our default time and date settings we'll click next. I'm going to choose a home network for this connection and then we're done. All right, well, our system's up and running now and it's booted directly into Windows 7. But what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go and restart this machine. So from our start menu, we'll choose restart. Well, I've just restarted our machine. And as you can see, it boots now into a new menu where we can choose which operating system we'd like to boot. So we could boot into Windows XP or Windows 7. Now, if, if it at all bothers you that this boot menu doesn't say Windows XP, it just says an earlier version of Windows, then we can fire up Windows 7 and I'll show you how we can fix that. So we'll select Windows 7 using our up and down arrow keys and we'll hit enter to boot up into Windows 7. So in Windows 7, we need to use the BCD edit command to edit our boot configuration. Now in Windows XP, we just needed to edit a simple text file, but since Windows Vista came around, we now use the BC edit command. So we're going to click on start and we'll type in CMD as we'll want to open up a new command prompt. And here's a little hint for you guys. If I simply hit enter right now and I open up this command prompt, then it's going to open up with low privileges. And as such, I won't be able to run the command that I want to run. So let's do it anyway. We'll test it. We'll enter in BCD edit and I'll just hit enter. And as you can see, access has been denied. The data store could not be open. And that's because I don't have the privileges to run it even though I am actually an administrator. So let's close this command prompt now by typing exit and we'll click start, CMD again. And this time we're going to open up a command prompt with administrator privileges. And to do that, we again click start and type CMD. But this time when we hit enter, we're also going to hold down the control key and a shift key as well. And then we'll hit enter 
And this time, we'll get a user account control message asking us to confirm that we do in fact want to run this command. So we're going to click yes. And this time, our command prompt opens in administrator mode. And up the top here on the left in the title bar, you can clearly see the word administrator. OK, so let's run BCD edit again. And this time, if we just hit enter, you can see that our command works fine. All right, well, if we take a look at the output of this command here, we can see right here Windows 7. And a little bit higher up, we can see our earlier operating system listed here. Now, to change the text of our bootloader to read Windows XP, we'll simply need to type in bcd edit slash set nt loader and then set the description to whatever we want it to read. So let's take another look at this. Since we need to make a change here, we're going to use the slash set switch followed by NT loader here in curly braces. You see, by default, if we don't specify NT loader here, then this command will write our current default entry, which is the Windows 7 run. So rather than changing the text for Windows XP, which is what we want to do, we'd be actually changing our Windows 7 text. So here we're specifying the identifier. Up here, we can see that matches NT loader there. Now next, we've set our description to Windows XP. And that's it. So we'll hit Enter and we're done. And now if we simply run BCD edit by itself, up here we can see the change has been made. Now I'll also point out one other thing here. Windows 7 is the default operating system that will be booted when we start up our computer. So if we power on our computer and we walk away, if we just scroll up here a little bit, when we power up our computer and we walk away, the menu is going to sit there for a total of 30 seconds. And if there's been no keyboard activity, or in other words, you haven't selected an operating system, it's going to start up the default operating system, which will be Windows 7. If you want to change this timeout value here, or perhaps the default operating system, we can do both of those things from here with this command as well. So to change this timeout value, we'll run BCD edit again followed by the timeout switch and then the value we want. So let's halve the value, we'll say 15 seconds and we'll hit enter. And if we run BCD edit again, we can see up here that our timeout value is now 15. So when we reboot, our system is only gonna sit there at the menu for 15 seconds instead of 30. Okay, so let's change our default operating system that'll be loaded once this timeout expires. So. Again, we are going to run our BCD edit command with the slash default switch. And we then need to set the identifier. So the identifier up here is NT loader. So rather than writing all that out, I'm just going to copy and then paste that in. And we'll hit enter. Again, the command was successful. So if we run BCD edit one more time and then scroll up, up here, Next to our default switch, we can see that NT Loader, or in other words, Windows XP, is now the default operating system. And that'll be booted if we don't select anything from our menu when we start our machine. So let's test it out. Let's reboot our computer. So we'll click Start, and we'll choose to restart it. And we'll be back in a moment. All right, well, I've restarted our Windows 7 machine and we're back now at our boot menu. This time, it's a little more friendly. We have Windows XP and Windows 7 to choose from. And our timeout value is now 15 seconds. And if we don't enter anything in here, if we don't select an operating system to load, Windows XP will be loaded in place of Windows 7. So in this video, we've seen how easy it is to install Windows 7 in a multi-boot scenario when we already have Windows XP installed. So if you're not quite ready to ditch Windows XP just yet, realize that you don't have to. Run a dual boot system, enjoy both operating systems for now, and then make that switch when you're ready. So we hope you've enjoyed this video and we'd like to thank you for watching.